Hey guys, it's Creaky Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a double dose of gameplay for you some high kill monster rounds here. First up, I'm going to be playing in one of my favorite tier 6 tanks, it is the SU 100. Now, I've always loved this. I, I haven't really played it so much in the last few years, but I remember back in the day that it was one of the highlights for me along the Soviet tank destroyer tech tree. And to be honest, when you think about it, the SU-152 is pretty good with the derp as well. The ISU-152, well that's a monster, the Object 704. Do you know what, I like everything about this tech tree right up until you get towards the Object 268. And now, don't get me wrong, the Object 268 can be a lot of fun, but oh, it just feels so meh when you've had the same kind of alpha damage for three tiers. The reason why the 704 is special is because it has the durability that the ISU-152 does not. And the 268, well, it doesn't really bring anything more to the table apart from having higher penetration, way better premium rounds, and really good high explosive rounds. But let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the Tier 6 Soviet tank destroyer in the form of the SU-100. Bit of an awkward start to this game, I was hoping that I was going to obliterate the BDR there, but unfortunately it looks like we went into his tracks, and I'm surprised we didn't also penetrate his hull. Because one thing I noticed while I was doing my French heavy tank tech tree showcase is that the, the hull armor, actually the, the, the tracks on the BDR go over the hull, and so maybe I could have gone through the tracks and also penetrated the hull at the same time. Nevertheless, our second shot goes in. Now one of the big decisions that you have to make with the SU-100 is what gun do you choose to use on it? And this is something that you'll have on the, the SU-85 as well, and especially on the SU-152. Come round the corner, auto-aim, one shot a tier 4 Czechoslovakian medium tank rip there unfortunately, but that's what happens when you're in these plus 2 kind of matchup games. And that's what the Soviet tank destroyers are specialized for, high alpha damage rounds. And so, that's what I've chosen. I've chosen the big gun on this tank. Now while the, the 100mm, it can provide you with some flexibility and you've got a little bit more DPM and it's not so painful when you want to one-shot those low health tanks. Talk about killing the puppies right now, another full health tank this time in the form of the Stug 3B. But this 122mm packs 390 alpha damage. And when you can one-shot your opponents, why do you need silly things like aim time, gun handling, rate of fire, and all of that? Now a tier 5 tank destroyer steps up. The T-67 is shut down. But unfortunately, I take a round from the, the artillery on the enemy team there. That tier 4 pesky artillery does remove a substantial amount of my hit points, 103 to be exact. Oh well, at least I've got a few more to, to donate around. And so... This gun is the same that's on the tier 7 Soviet heavy tank, the IS. But when you mount it on the SU-100 instead of the IS, it's just got better accuracy, it's got better aim time. Its rate of fire is actually a little bit worse than the IS, but only marginally so. But to have that fairly decent DPM of 1,800 and just the fact that your alpha damage, I mean the 390 alpha damage is good for an IS, that 390 alpha is what makes that tank special. So to be able to drop it down a tier and have it at tier 6, well it's just even more remarkable. When we think about it, other tank destroyers, for example the, the British AT, is it the 86 or is it the 88? I believe it's called the 88 and then it's weird because it becomes the 87. Hmm, I'm not 100% certain about that. But that uses the Black Prince gun, so you've got 150 alpha damage on that. And if you play the, is it the Churchill gun carriage or carrier, oh god, god for all, that god awful tier 6 British tank destroyer, probably one of the worst vehicles in the game. I think at the moment you use a 32 pounder on that tank that has 250 alpha, but I think next patch it's going to be going up to 280, which is a little bit better, but come on, it is not 390, and 390 just feels absolutely incredible. That's an equal tiered medium tank. Fair enough, I got fortunate that I fired that one onto the move, on the move into him, but I, I just got to take my chances, right? Uh, he wasn't going to be able to close the distance before I reload, the rate of fire isn't that terrible on the tank, so why not take a punt? And it's completely changed the, the engagement here. If he had been on full health and he came towards me, he would know that uh, he could come over, I'd have to put two shots into him, and he would probably be able to pressure me down and with his good rate of fire and my fairly low hit points, he would probably win the engagement. But by, just ta by taking that chance, praying to serve I guess, and our shell actually landing, then it changes things, and that's what alpha is all about. And when you go, when you've got an opportunity to fire, and you know that you're not going to uh, to need to have that shell before you manage to reload again, you might as well take the chance. And when you've got big alpha 
then it just makes it all the more special when it does work out. Now one thing I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to avoid going into the cap circle because of course if you go into the cap circle it alerts your opponents and they'll know exactly where you are and maybe that will alert the sneaky tank destroyers on the enemy team as to where I'm coming from. So I'm on six kills here. I'm going to try and hunt down maybe a seventh, possibly an eighth in this game. We're going to have to see if that happens. But already secured a top gun. And there is a Sav M43. Another poor little tier four tank. And he is gone. Goodbye, Sweden there. And I guess when you're in these kind of minus two matchmakings with this kind of alpha, it's just absolutely scary on this vehicle. That's one of the bizarre things for me about low tier World of Tanks. It's just the steps up in the hit points feel absolutely gigantic. Or at least they start to get gigantic when you reach tier 6, 7, 8 and, and 9. Let's think about it. Heavy tank wise, I guess when you're at tier 5 you've got about 600 hit points. There you go, there's our 8th kill. Radley Walters medal secured and we bounce a shell from behind against the KV-85, but that's one of the great things about the SG-100 is that its rear armor is actually very angled and the side is as well. So it doesn't matter where you're getting shot from, you still have a fairly good chance of being able to avoid the damage and of course with 45 millimeters of all round protection, 75 on the front, then you're not going to be overmatched anytime soon. And with my team finishing off the remaining KV-85, we pick up a pretty nice result here in a fairly short period of time. And I do thoroughly recommend the SU-100 to any players out there that are looking for just a well-rounded tank destroyer. At the mid-tiers, it's not too expensive to play. The shell cost a thousand credits, that's a little bit expensive. But then again, if you can connect the shells, 390 alpha is very decent indeed, and 160 75 millimeters of penetration that should allow you to not ever have to fire premium rounds in this vehicle and still have a good chance of going through vehicles even in your plus two matchups against tier eights. So next up I'm playing in the tier six premium Polish medium tank it is the poodle and I guess gosh Christmas is really coming right now. This is the final day of November 1st of December tomorrow that means I guess we're going to be seeing Wargaming's advent calendar but one thing I can't help but be a little bit sad about is that I was kind of just praying when the poodle was released that maybe we'll get a Polish tech tree in time for Christmas to have something to to work on right sure we're getting the uh, the French heavies and they do look like they could be a lot of fun but oh, I have to admit after Wargaming teased us with this brand new Polish premium earlier this year I just thought oh surely there's going to be a tech tree to follow because every other time that Wargaming have released a, a premium vehicle of a of a new nation then the tech tree has followed but that just ha hasn't been the case with the poodle nevertheless i'm still having ah, a reasonable amount of fun when i play this tank and i'm not going to lie and say that it's always oh, the best thing that i've ever played it's more of a kind of a mid to long range support tank but when you do get into a matchup like this then you can play as if you were a baby panther which is effectively what this vehicle is so I'm playing on fjords and one of my favorite things to do on fjords is to try and make my way around this corner and to poach this ridge line against the, the enemies that will be over here. But there seems to be a Cromwell who's being very aggressive on the enemy team and he's come after me. Now we've managed to hit him once, we missed our second shot, we put our third in, we don't quite manage to hit the fourth and in fact, wow, this was actually very late at night I believe when I was playing this game. I was probably a little bit tired as I fired that one, my reaction looked god awful there. Nevertheless, nothing lost, nothing gained. We might not be able to hit the Cromwell anymore, but this SU-85B decides to just sit right in front of us. We'll put one in, put two in, put three in. And when you think about it, tier four tank destroyers, they just really don't have the hit points. And then again, tier four medium tanks don't really have the hit points in the form of, look at this Lee. I basically two or three shot this M3 Lee. That's absolutely ridiculous. Another tier four tank, put one into him. Well, that was literally half the Hetz's hit points. And this is a very rapid firing gun. In retrospect, this makes me absolutely pity everybody who is just starting to get into World of Tanks because I've almost forgotten about what a pain it is when you do have to deal with those ultra high tier vehicles at low tiers. Now, I feel that when you start to get to tier 7, dealing with a tier 9 tank might not be so tricky. But when you're in a tier 4 vehicle and you have to try and take out a tier 6 in a pure hit point kind of DPM matchup, it's just really not going to work out for you. And so we managed to obliterate that entire flank almost single-handed. Not that it was really that impressive with three tier 4 tanks taken out and a tier 6 vehicle as well. And now we get to trundle on down the slope towards the enemy base and hopefully those three juicy artillery that they have. 
Now I remember when I was just finishing up the commentary on that SU-100 replay, I was mentioning about hit points increases in World of Tanks, and I started at Tier 5. I think Tier 5 heavies have got about 600, 700 hit points. I think Tier 6 heavies have roughly got about 1,000. Then when you reach Tier 7, it's about 1,300, I'd say, roughly. Then when you go up to Tier 8, it's about, well, some of them have got 1,500, and some of them are starting to poach up to about 1,700. Then when you reach Tier 9, well, it's roughly about 1,800 to 2,000. And then when you hit Tier 10, well, it can range anywhere then, right? From about 2,200 all the way up to 3,000. And so, uh, when you think about it, at the high tiers, Nobody is really going to kill you just flat out instantly unless it's probably a Fosh B with an autoloader, right? But these low tiers, I, the, what, what are these tier 4 tanks really going to be able to do against the tier 6? Now I know that Wargaming have protected tier, what is it, tier 3 vehicles so they can never meet tier 5 tanks. Do they need to go further and make it so that tier 4 vehicles can never meet tier 6 tanks? Because this really just hasn't been very fair for the enemy team. But I guess the main problem is, is that at low tiers, your DPM seems to be rather high, but your hit points are just very low, and so people are just killing each other left, right, and center very, very quickly. And talking about killing people left, right, and center, looks like this Covenanter, who's picked up a couple of kills at the end of the game, seems to be wanting to try and kill my grill friend down there. Is he going to be able to get it? Oh, unfortunately he does. Nevertheless, I'm going to get revenge. I work my way over the slope, and I decide to not even shoot to maybe get a few style points to pick up that 8th kill and secure a very quick Radley Walters here for the Poodle. And so two explosive rounds here for our tier 6 tanks and while we didn't really feel too challenged in these replays, it was still a lot of fun to be able to pick up 16 kills in pretty much about 11 minutes here. Firstly in the SU-100, Radley Walters medal, high caliber, no surprise there, 2,222. That's not too impressive for a tier 6, but when you're one-shotting everything it doesn't really feel like you can pump the damage up and we make a decent amount of credits. And while I can't promise you're going to be picking up medals like this in every one of your games, it still can be a barrel of laughs. And next up in the Poodle, Radley Walters medal, a Dimitrius medal for killing all three self-propelled guns on the enemy team, a Scout medal for scouting most of the team, okay just scraped it, 9 spots there, and a high caliber for our 2,504 damage, 8 kills there, 1,377 base experience points, I don't think we fired any premium rounds, so we make a decent amount of credits. And you might notice that we do get a whopping amount of experience here, 15,000 to be exact, and that's because I've still got some of those 5 times experience events for the poodle and yeah just a word of warning tomorrow all of your five times bonuses if any of you bought the gigantic bundles for the poodle or also for the primo victoria are going to run out so today is the final opportunity for you to finish those five times experience events and so that's it for today ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down and let me know why in the comments down below and also i'd just like to announce on youtube i know i've said this on twitch already that i have a limited edition t-shirt for sale for the next four days if you've been following the channel for a long time you'll know that I do one of these roughly every six months and then I never sell them again afterwards. So if you want to get your hands on the bish bash bosh which is a phrase that I'm constantly saying on stream when I just get things done often easier than I thought it would be and what better tank is there than the IS-3 from getting the job done easily right? The t-shirt ships worldwide and should arrive in time for Christmas. There are also hoodies available if that's more your kind of thing and boys are getting cold outside or alternatively there are some ladies scoop neck cuts out there for all of my probably four or five female fans who might be watching this video. And also, if you need the t-shirt available in man sizes, then if you click the third one from the left, then it is available in 5XL for my biggest fans. Oh, and I can show you what my sample looks like on me. Oh, I'm a terrible model, but... There you go. And I'd like to give everybody just a massive thank you who has ever picked up one of my t-shirts or maybe wants to pick up this one. It's a fantastic way of supporting my content directly. And it's also oh so fun for me when I go to Tankfest or Gamescom and I see some of you wearing them as well. And if you want to check it out, you can find a link in the description. I'll pin one in the comments down below and you can also use that more info icon in the top right hand corner of your screen. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.